So this video is not going to be talking about three financial statements, nor is it about three financial ratios. But if you don't talk about these three things when having your credit risk interview, you won't be seen as a natural for credit risk. Let's jump into the video. So whenever I had my credit risk interviews, whether that was at investment banks, rating agencies or other types of institutions, they always wanted to make sure I was a natural at credit risk. Now, of course, everything can be learned. The financial statements, financial ratios, they're all important. And the only way we know them is by learning them. And so, of course, those two things will be tested in your credit risk interviews. But the interviewer also wants to know, do you understand what you're assessing credit risk for? Or are you just regurgitating theory that you learn from textbooks? So a typical credit risk interview question will consist of you answering, how would you assess the credit risk of company X? Now, of course, use the financial statements to pull out the data required revenue, operating profit, liabilities, and use financial ratios to explain what the financial statements are showing. But in an interview, you won't have financial statements in front of you. And so it'll just be the theory you'll be talking about. But there's three areas the interviewer wants you to expand on when assessing credit risk to show that you understand the full picture of your assessment. Number one is how the company is run. Number two is the industry the company is in. And number three are the macro factors that affect the company. And each of these points, you want to assess how the revenue will be affected, which in turn will have an impact on the credit risk. Let's look at these three points in more detail. Here in your credit risk interview, you'll be talking about how the company is run and specifics about what is it that makes it a good or bad company. And in this video, I'm going to be using Coca-Cola as a real life example to explore all the points to give you the best possible answers that you could use. So you want to start off with the size of the company. Now, Coca-Cola dominates the soda industry and in the overall drinks industry, it's the second largest in the world. This shows that the credit risk is quite limited from the perspective of it going into bankruptcy. Another important point about the company will be, does the company have a diversified revenue locations? Now, of course, Coca-Cola is sold around the world and everyone knows about it. So yes, it generates revenue from all corners of the world, which means again, a lower credit risk assessment. You'll also want to explore the product mix the company has. Are they dependent on one product for the revenue? Of course, dependency on one product will mean a higher credit risk, but Coca-Cola has a lot of different products, different sodas, sports drinks, juices, water, iced tea. It definitely does not depend on one product for its revenue. Lastly, you want to summarize the strategy of the company for the coming years. What are its plans to increase its market share, its products, but importantly, how realistic are they? And one of the ways you can tell if the strategies will ever be successful is by analyzing the management of the company. So the management should have good experience and a good track record of making changes for a company of this size. Next, in your credit risk interview, you want to be covering the industry the company exists in. So some of the points here will be, is the industry cyclical? Do sales go up and down during the year? Well, not really. People drink Coke in the summer and winter, so that won't be relevant in terms of any credit risk since revenue will be relatively constant throughout the year. Obviously, the more revenue is dependent on few months of the year, the greater the credit risk will be. You also want to examine the competitive climate of the industry that the company exists in. The more competition, the more chances the company could lose sales and in turn exhibit higher credit risk. Now, Coca-Cola has roughly a 25% market share of the soft drink industry. The next largest competitor is PepsiCo with around a 10% market share. So there's not a lot of risk from many competitors, if any. If you have to think about the advertising costs that a company trying to compete with Coca-Cola would have to do, it would be pretty unheard of. Regulation of the industry is another big area to look at in this section when analyzing credit risk. Now for Coca-Cola, there's quite a few different regulations which could impact the industry. This could be employment laws affecting its workers or specific taxes levied on the industry. For example, in the UK, a sugar tax on drinks with high sugars was introduced in 2018. This increased the price of drinks such as Coke and the credit risk is then determined by how consumers would react to this price increase. Would consumers carry on buying Coke 
if it costs more. Now, whenever you do bring up one of these points, remember to bring up what is a company doing to counter it. So in response to the sugar tax, we can talk about Coca-Cola is limiting that sugar tax impact on them because of its product mix. Like we already discussed, Coca-Cola has a multitude of drinks, some of which would not be impacted by the sugar tax, such as iced teas, water and Coke Zero. So that regulation impact would be dampened by the company's product mix. There's a few other points to consider when considering how the industry impacts credit risk. You've got the maturity of the industry. This isn't relevant to Coca-Cola, but for new products, especially new tech, this could impact credit risk if not a lot of consumers are adopting the new tech yet. And also what is the general financial outlook of the industry as a whole? And usually you'll be able to get this from various industry reports that are written by equity research analysts, for example. Okay, so after that, in your credit risk interview, you want to be talking about the macro environment that the company exists in. So what stage of the economic cycle are we in? The deeper we are in a recession, the higher the credit risk would be of the company. What about country risk? What places around the world is Coca-Cola dependent on for bottling, for sales, for raw materials? If these locations have war, drought, or are in recession, then the credit risk again will jump up. Here you also want to show in your credit risk interview that you understand what the product actually is. So Coca-Cola is made up mainly of water, sugar, coca beans, hence showing you understand the importance of the commodities market is very, very important. Prices which Coca-Cola doesn't necessarily control but are essential to the production of the goods is going to be a very important point to bring up in your interview, similar to how the market for semiconductors would impact the prices and credit risk of Apple's iPhones. It's also important to look at not only at the inputs, but understand the consumers who ultimately purchase the product. Looking at Coca-Cola, one of the macro factors it has to contest with is that there's a trend these days of consumers opting for healthier drinks. Now, how would this impact the credit risk of Coca-Cola? Is Coca-Cola developing products to appease the healthier consumers. If they don't, then the revenue will decrease, which will increase the company's credit risk. So you can see it's very important that these three points are always included when answering your credit risk interview questions. So these will show to the interviewer that you understand what you're assessing and not just repeating theory, which may or may not be relevant to every company. But before you get asked anything in your credit risk interview, you're going to get asked one question to ease yourself in the interview. And I've made a video to help you with that interview question, which will give you the best possible start. I'm going to link that video at the end of this one. So make sure you watch that and I'll see you all in the next video.